uh, video lecture about bioelectronic systems, let's now talk about biosensors. So, what is a biosensor? So, a biosensor is a sensing device made up of a combination of specific biological elements and a transducer. You have a specific biological element that recognizes a specific analyte and a, cha and a change in the biomolecule are usually converted into electrical signal which in turn is um, calibrated by a certain scale by a trans uh, transducer. So that biological, uh, that sensing element, uh, that, uh, that specific biological element can be an enzyme catalyzing a specific substrate uh, reaction or it can be an antibody sensing a very specific protein. It can be a DNA that hybridizes to its um, um, to the uh, what you call that the, the complement um, strands, or it can be a microorganism that's actually uh, doing tasks. So these are some biological recognition elements. So and then th these elements are usually linked to your sensor material. And then that sensor material is then connected to the to your transducer. So example of biosensors. So for example, uh, we are sensing here different uh, molecules or different components in the system. Uh, let's say for example a certain protein. You have a bioreceptor, which is it can be an enzyme, an antibody, a microorganisms, or CDL. So it can be, uh, for example, in our case, it's a protein. So you have the protein, your analyte, it's, it is sensed by, say, your antibody. So the antibody then produces a signal that is sent. So do this, what are these signals? So it can be an electrical change, for example. It's a set enzyme substrate or enzyme catalyzed reaction. So it's a reaction. You have your... Um, once the reaction happens, you have uh, movement of the electrons, and that movement of electrons is, uh, is basically um, sense as an electroactive because, well, of course, it's electrons, it's, it's charged. So that movement of charges is sensed and then uh, sensed by your electrode, which is your transducer, and then it, it becomes a measurable signal, or it can also be a pH change. PH, when, uh, when you say pH, is basically a potential difference between the inside or outside of the membrane. So that pH change can be detected by a pH electrode or a semiconductor pH electrode. So it can also be heat, heat or light, or even mass change. So the usual case is for antibodies uh, binding or even DNA binding. So you have mass changes because when it binds, of course, it, it, it will have a different mass. So you have piezoelectric devices that sense those very minute mass changes. So your an again your analyte um, reacts to your bioreceptor, and then that bioreceptor, or rather even the interaction between the analyte and bioreceptor, creates signal that is detected by your transducer. And then the transducer then converts that signal to a an electronic elect electrical signal that can be processed by an electronic system. So what's the basic characteristics of a biosensor? So these are the four basic requirements or four basic parameters that you need to consider. So first is linearity, which is uh, the linearity of the sensor should be high for detection of a high substrate concentration. Basically, if you have high con high signals, the, the, the magnitude of the signal should also be detected by your system. For example, uh, high signal, high um, that can be registered a high concentration by your electronic device. So if it's a low, si low amount of signal, low amount of metabolites in the system, or low amount of your analyte in the system, it, you can still sense this, the analyte, but you will, uh, the, the sensor will know that it's oh, it's just a low concentration of that. So there's a basic linearity. So you can actually calculate the concentration in here. In linearity, it allows you to calculate the, the concentration of the analyte you are sensing. And then you have sensitivity. Sensitivity, which is uh, the value of the electrode response per substrate concentration. So of course, how how what is the uh, the lowest um, the lowest concentration that your um, that your sensor can detect? Of course, there's uh, there's always that uh, lowest concentration. For example, in creating, let's say uh, again in our uh, in light of the COVID crisis, let's say your biosensor 
detects the virus itself. So, how, how, uh, what is the limit of detection? So, what is the lowest possible amount of virus it can detect? So, of course, uh, I'm not sure if you can, uh, you can develop right now a sensor that can detect just one. If there's only one virus particle here, it can be detected. Oh, well, that's good. But usually, um, it's, uh, it's basically used as a concentration. So, for example, for a few virions, uh, your, your sensor can detect uh, a certain microgram, let's say one microgram of virus in um, 1 ml of your sample. So, that's actually a, a good enough sensitivity. So, if your biosensor is not sensitive, so even if there are say, uh, you will have false negatives. So basically, the, the the usage of the sensor will be diminished because it cannot sense, uh, or rather its sensitivity is low, so it cannot sense, it's present there, but the, your sensor cannot sense it. So basically, that's, that's one of the things you need to consider. How, what's the limit of sensitivity of your sensor? And then we we'll also have selectivity. Because again, um, the, one of the reasons why we use uh, bioelectronic devices is because um, they are highly selective molecules and um, in, in real case scenarios for example uh, again if you have blood for example blood samples it's a very complex mixture of different um, particles so you have the red blood cells there it, there might even be some viruses but other types of viruses in there so let's say um, among the um, SARS-CoV virus you also have the HIV virus so um, can your system detect only the SARS-CoV virus instead of the HIV virus? So that is uh, selectivity. So there are many different interf uh, interfering elements there, but your device must be able to correctly identify which is the one that you wanted to look for. So chemical interference must be minimized in obtaining correct results. So if you have low selectivity, if uh, you will have here false positive results so if you have low sensitivity it's false negative it's low selectivity it's false positive because you might detect something else but it's not really the one that you're looking for and then you have response time so response time uh, for basically that is how your the time necessary for from the biological event to occur and then for your sensor to recognize the event and give you the appropriate output. So basically, those are the four different uh, parameters you need to consider in selecting or rather designing your biosensor. So we have several types. These are some types of biosensor but not limited to this one. So we have calorimetric biosensor, potentiometric biosensor, amperometric, optical or piezoelectric biosensors. So let's first um, discuss it, uh, the piezoelectric biosensors. Piezoelectricity Piezoelectric, which uh, makes use of piezoelectricity, which is the potential difference created across certain materials due to an applied mechanical stress. So, piezoelectric uh, devices or sensors are usually applied as um, as the in the configuration if when you have um, antibody binding or antibody uh, pro antibody sensors. So it if when we, call, when we talk about immunosensors, kasi we are talking about antibodies because antibodies are one of the basic components of the immune system. So, uh, immunosensors make use of antibodies. And antibodies are proteins that uh, can recognize very, very specific signaling proteins in a mixture. So, we call those signaling proteins the antigen. So, um, they are very sensitive, in fact. Uh, you can detect antigens in 5 gram range. So, when the, the antigen, which is the, the, your pro, the protein of interest that you want to detect, we call it antigen because it binds to your antibody. The antigen binds to the antibody in the immunosensor. So, of course, it, it well, your, the mass will increase. So, there will be a deformation, a very, very slight deformation in your sensor, and then that is detected. You will generate a piezoelectric signal there, and then you will have, of course, the electrical signal now you need to generate. So, bioelectronics, piezoelectronic biosensors work by measuring the change in frequency, which occurs when the antigen binds to the antibody receptor. So, they, uh, what are the uses for that? Usually used to, de to detect um, cancer biomarkers 
used for drug effectivity, DNA hybridization. So when you do DNA sequencing, you want to sequence a certain strip of DNA. Um, the piezoelectric sensors are the are part of the, the solid support where your um, the DNA hybridizes to. So when the DNA hybridizes to your to its complement fragment that was attached to this the, the bioelectronic support, of course the, the binding the hybridization changes the weight of that um, of that fragment that was attached and then you will have your electrical signal. And then you can use that to compare DNA strand. But of course, longer strands have higher, uh, larger weights. And then it can also be used in detecting not only hepatitis virus, many a myriad of other different viruses. So another uh, type of biosensor is potentiometric biosensors. Potentiometric, usually you find them in pH electrodes. So they usually sense um, change in the distribution of charge between one part of the membrane and then the other part. So an example of a potentiometric biosensor is the ISPET, that is the, the electrode or the sensor in your pH meters. The, the pH meter that you use in the laboratory where you, uh, you just soak them into solution, so that's, that's a type of a potentiometric sensor. So they detect the, uh, if it's acidic or basic based on a difference between the outside, which is your solution that you want to test, and then the inside. And the inside of the um, of these the electrode contains a, a, a reference solution. So from that reference, you will know ah, based on my reference, this is more acidic than this the inside, or it, this is more basic than the inside. So how will you know? Because acids and bases. In the case of acids, you have an excess of positive charge. These are the protons, the hydronium ions. Whereas if you have a base, you have an excess of an OH, or your you have a, an excess of a negative charge. So that is that can be detected by the different by your potentiometric biosensor. So this one requires P types and N types semiconductors. So I believe you already are aware of the difference between the N types and the P types semiconductors. So we also have amperometric biosensors for applied currents. So this sensor uh, senses the movement of electrons in redox reactions when a certain potential is applied between, you have, you, between your two electrodes, uh, the cathode and the anode. So amperometric biosensors, they function by production of a current when a potential is applied between the two electrodes. So they have response times, dynamic ranges and sensitivity similar to potentiometric. Actually, the, the example that I had in the previous video, the one where as you have your biofuel, um, cell, uh, the basic layout of a biofuel, that's an example that can also be construed as an amperometric biosensor. So here, another one is an example of an amperometric biosensor. This is, um, you have your glucose oxidase. So this, this biosensor is used to detect the presence of glucose in a solution or in a mixture. So you have the glucose oxidase, GOD enzyme that is immobilized in your sensor and then when glucose happens you have a reaction of your glucose with your it's actually a redox reaction involving oxygen so there's a redox reactions and then um, you have your since it's redox there's a movement in electrons so that creates a certain move um, that change in electron will be sensed by your amperometric biosensor because there's basically a current that flows when electron moves so you have that type of biosensor and then for optical biosensor it can be colorimetric or potential uh, photometric so colorimetric you are sensing difference in colors of the light and photometric if it's about uh, intensities of light so how uh, usually phot photometric are used when you want to uh, we usually do that in UVB spectroscopy we want to know the concentration of a certain substance and uh, we are checking or we are measuring the light absorption of your sample if you have an incident versus the um, the light that that you receive after passing through your sample so if there's a change in absorption it's correlated linearly correlated to the concentration of the sample so that is a photometric biosensor. So these are the optical types of biosensor. And then we have calorimetric biosensors. Calorimetric, calorimetry, basically heat. This one senses heat. 
So if you have a certain exothermic reaction, and then uh, when when we say exothermic, it's a reaction that releases heat. So it releases heat. So you have thermistors uh, to measure the difference in um, resistance between the reaction and the product. So you will have, of course, your um, the, the change in the temperature that the the, the heat can be sensed. So you have your calorimetric biosensor. So as of well, basically, it's a uh, quite an old data. In 2003, so it's already a 7.3 billion dollar market. And as of now, especially in light of the pandemic, a lot of biological um, startups have been started uh, to do myriad different tasks. So the, the biosensors can be applied not only in medical fields, you can also do that in defense, food and beverage industry, environment, and even in bio or pharma, pharmacological. Research. So you have a, a quite a large uh, market when you um, when you try to design when you design a biosensor. You have uh, a lot of options to look at when you want to sell your biosensor. So that's it for this lecture.